Good day, Grade 8 Math Leads. Today, we will continue our discussion of factoring trinomials of the form ax squared plus minus bx plus minus c. But this time, a is not equal to 1. To begin, let's consider the product of the following binomials. Given the quantity 2x plus 1 times the quantity x plus 3 and this is equal to 2x times x plus 2x times 3 plus 1 times x plus 1 times 3 and simplifying this we have 2x times x we have 2x squared plus 2x times 3 we have 6x plus 1 times x we have x and 1 times 3 we have 3 and combining like or combining like terms to simplify it further we have 2x squared and 6x plus x we have 7x and plus 3 from this example notice that the product of the first terms of the binomials gives the x squared term of the trinomial 2x times x equals 2x squared here and we have and the product of the last terms of the binomials gives the last term 1 times 3 which is equal to 3. Lastly, in number 3, the sum of the products of the outer terms and the inner terms of the binomial gives the middle term of the trinomial which is 2x times 3 plus 1 times x equals 7x. Since the middle term is simply the sum of the products of the inner and the outer terms. So these observations give us the idea that in order to factor a trinomial of the form ax squared plus minus bx plus minus c where a is not equal to 1 we must consider the first and last terms which are a and c respectively that is to look for pairs of integers or numbers whose product is ac um, we'll go over these steps in greater depth later furthermore just as when a is equal to 1, we must consider the middle term, particularly its sign, in order to determine the signs of the possible factors of a and c. And without further ado, in order to guide us in factoring the trinomial a x squared plus minus bx plus minus c, let us first become acquainted with the key steps that we must take. First and foremost, we will list all pairs of integers whose product is a. Um, this means we'll be looking for two integers or number numbers a sub 1 and a sub 2 here whose product is a. And second, we must also list all integer pairs or pairs of integers whose product is C. Similarly to step 1, we look for two integers or numbers M and N whose product is C. Then in step 3, we're going to choose a pair a sub 1 m and a sub 2 n whose sum is b. 
such that a sub 1 m plus minus a sub 2 n equals b in step 3 we'll use a trial and error method to determine the various combinations of factors that can be multiplied and added to get b and in step 4 the the factor form of ax squared plus minus bx plus minus c is simply given by the quantity a sub 1 x plus minus m times the quantity a sub 2 x plus minus n uh, this means that after successfully determining the possible combinations of pairs of integers we'll express the numbers as, as factors of the form the quantity a sub 1 x plus minus m times the quantity a sub 2 x plus minus n that is if both integers are positive we have um the quantity a sub 1 x plus m times the quantity a sub 2 x plus n and if both factors are negative we have a sub 1 x minus m times the quantity a sub 2 x minus n we have the quantity a sub 1 x plus m times the quantity quantity x minus n or or we have the quantity a sub 1 x minus m times the quantity x plus n when one is positive and the other is negative when writing the factor we should keep in mind that multiplication is both commutative and associative that means the order of the multiplicands has no effect on the product then in step 5 we have to verify the factor this means that we must multiply the factors formed to see if they satisfy the given trinomial and finally as we all know not all trinomials of the form ax squared plus minus bx plus minus c can be factored hence in the event that there are no such integers a sub 1 m plus minus a sub 2 n is equal to b the trinomial uh, cannot be factored and is called a prime polynomial okay so these are the key steps that we must take when factoring trinomials a x squared plus minus b x plus minus c now let's look at some examples to help you understand the steps better okay in number one example we have factor 4x squared minus 11x plus 6 so first let's list all possible pairs of integers a sub 1 and a sub 2 whose product is a from the given trinomial the value of a is 4 here thus we need to find two integers whose product is 4 basically we have the integers um, 2 and 2 and we have 1 and 4 right so let's denote the the, the two integers a sub 1 and a sub 2 so the first one we have 2 
um, and 2 and the second one is 1 and 4 so that's for step 1 next is step 2 we're going to list all pairs of integers as well m and n here whose product is c from the given trinomial the value of c is 6 thus we need to find two integers whose product is 6 and basically we have the integers 2 and 3 and 1 and 6 so let's have here the integers m and n for c and the integers whose product is 6 are 2 times 3 and we have 1 and 6 or 1, one times 6. It is important to note class that the, the larger the number is, the many the possible pairs are. So to help us find the possible pairs of integers, it is suggested to use the factor 3 method. Um, maybe we could show it later to some examples. Alright, and after this step, we have step 3. So in this step, we'll use a trial and error method to determine the various combinations of factors that can be multiplied or added to get B. And to get the right combination of pairs of integers, we need to take note of the sign of C and the sign of B. Recall that when, uh, let's have here C and then B, um, M, and N. Let's say L, uh, M is larger than N. That means M is the larger integer and N is the smaller integer. When C is positive and B is also positive, that means both integers M and N are positive, okay? And when C is positive and B is negative, that means the larger number is negative and the smaller is positive. However, if C is negative, and B is um, positive, that means one of the integers or numbers is negative and the larger number is positive since B is positive and it is understood that the smaller integer is negative. While when C is negative and B is also negative, that means the larger number is negative and the smaller number is positive okay so it is very important to remember the the right combinations of the signs of the variables involved in our um in factoring rather um trinomial of the form ax squared plus minus bx plus minus c where a is equal to one and since c is c here is positive and b is negative negative 11 to be exact that means the integers m and n are both negative thus we have uh, following the factor form uh, of the this trinomial when c is positive and b is negative that means both factors are negative that means the factors take the form the quantity a sub 1 um, x minus m times the quantity a sub 2 x minus n okay so in step 4 
let's use two and two and two and three as possible combinations of pairs to find the factors and we're going to use trial and error method so we have here so a sub one here is two and we have x minus our m is two times the quantity we have a sub two two and then we have x minus three so after forming the factors we're going to verify whether it gives negative 11 as the middle term of our trinomial and i think there's no need to check the first and the last terms anymore since on the onset the pairs of integers we used are factors of both a and c however if time permits we can also check a and c if we want to to make sure that we have the right factors and going back from our discussions after checking it's quite obvious that the factors does not satisfy the middle term of our trinomial here since negative 2 times 2x is negative 4x and 2 times negative 3 is negative 6x when added it is equal to negative 10x okay and it's no longer necessary to interchange the two integers 2 and 3 because the first terms of both binomials are just the same the same number which is 2 so if we're going to interchange um, the two integers for example write 3 here and then we have 2 uh, we will get the same results since uh, we have here the same number for a sub 1 and a sub 2 therefore since this uh, this factor is not possible we'll look for another combination this time let's use 1 and 6 so we have um, 2x minus 1 times the quantity 2x minus 6 then let's verify whether it gives negative 11 as the middle term of our trinomial so we have here negative 1 times 2x is negative 2x and we have 2x times negative 6 we have here negative 12x when added the answer is negative 14x so just like the first one the factors does not satisfy the middle term as well of our trinomial here since when added it's negative 12x and again it's no longer necessary to interchange the two integers 1 and 6 because the first terms of both binomials are just the same number which is 2 that means we have to look for another combination and this time let's try 1 and 4 as factors of 4 and combine them with 2 and 3 and 1 and 6 so let, let's try first 2 and 3 so we have um, this time our a sub 1 and a sub 2 are 1 and 4 here so we have since the numerical coefficient 1 uh, since we are no longer writing 1 as numerical coefficient then we can simply write x minus 2 times the quantity um, 4x minus 3 so this is actually the third um, factor that we form that we formed from the given list of integers of a and c again 
let's verify whether it gives negative 11 as the middle term of our trinomial. So we have negative 2 times 4x. We have negative 8x. And x times negative 3. So we have negative 3x. When added, it's negative 11x. So since we've already got the right combination means it's no longer necessary to try the remaining pair 1 and 6. Thus, the factors of 4x squared minus 11x plus 6 are the quantity x plus 2 times the quantity x minus 3. So this is by trial and error method. That's it. Earlier, we have solved the given trinomial by trial and error method. This time, let's try solving the same trinomial by using an alternative method. In this method, first we're going to get the product of A and C. Then, we'll look for pair of integers or pairs of integers whose product is AC. Then, we'll choose a pair of integers whose product is AC and whose sum is B. So, let's start solving the trinomial using this alternative method. Um, I think we need to erase all the writings first. We have to make some working space. First, let's get the product of A and C. So we're going to multiply here 4 and 6. So 4 times 6 is equal to 24. To find the pairs of integers whose product is 24, we may use the factor 3 method as I've said earlier. So basically we we can have or we could have 1 and 24 as first factors right so we have if we're going to use factor 3 method so the first pair of integer is we have 1 and 24 then we have uh, let's start or let's use 4 and 6 here we can use the factors from the multiplication table. You may start what factors you know. So for instance, you are quite familiar with 4 and 6 as factors of 24. Then you may use 4 and 6. And let's try to factor this out. 4, we have 2 times 2. If we're going to get 2 here, that means... The two remaining numbers are 2 and 6. If we're going to multiply, we have 12. And 2 times 12 is 24. Okay? Then, let's factor out 6 as well. 2 and 3. So, if we're going to get 3, since we, haven't, uh, we don't have 3 here yet, if we're going to get 3 here, the remaining numbers are 2 times 2 times 2. We have 8. Okay? And I think there are only 4 possible pairs of integers whose product is 24. Then, out of these uh, pairs, we'll choose a pair whose sum is negative 11. But before that, let's recall that 24 is positive. Here, from 4, positive 4 times positive 6. So we have positive 24. And the middle term is negative 11. Okay? This tells us that both numbers are negative. So both numbers here are negative. So out of these pairs... Let's see which of the following pairs here will have 
negative 1, a negative 11, I mean, when added. And the right pair here is 3 and 8. Since negative 1 and ne negative 1 plus negative 24 is negative 25, not this one. Negative 4 plus negative 6 is negative 10, not this one as well. Negative 2 plus negative 12 is negative 14. Okay. And lastly, we have negative 3 and negative 8, which is negative 11 here. Okay. Now, let's write the numbers as factors following the form the quantity a sub 1 x minus m times the quantity a sub 2 x minus n all we need to do is just copy the value of a here for a sub 1 and a sub 2 and substitute 3 and 8 for m and n so we have here 4 x minus 3 times the quantity 4x minus 8 then we're going to divide everything by a that means whatever numerical co coefficient we have here we only need to copy for a sub 1 and a sub 2 and divide everything by 4 as well then let's simplify the factors by removing the gcf here so for the quantity 4x minus 3 there is no gcf here but for the second binomial here we have 4x minus 8 the gcf is 4 and we can write 4 here then just rewrite quantity 4x minus 3 times the quantity so if we removed 4 here that means this becomes x minus 2 so recall that recall that when we remove the gcf that means we divide each term by the gcf so 4x divided by 4 we have x minus 8 divided by 4 is 2 and divide by 4 okay as we can see we can cancel out 4 here that means the remaining factors are the quantity 4x minus 3 times the quantity x minus 2. So that's it. And I think we don't need to check the, the first term and the last term and the middle terms here simply because we already answered this earlier by trial and error method. And we've got the same answer. The quantity 4x minus 3 times the quantity x minus 2. So generally, we have presented two methods. The first one is by trial and error method. And the second one is the alternative method. So all you need to do is to practice both methods. And then it's up to you which method you're going to use or just choose any method you are comfortable using and practice that one and if you have any questions or clarifications you may write your comment below and i'll try to respond to it after reading them so let's try some more exercises